In this video we're going to establish an iteration which will work for a large number of equations of the form f of x equals naught. Suppose that we've got the function f is both continuous and can also be differentiated. Suppose further that it's known that the equation f of x equals naught has got a root close to the number x0. And we're calling this root alpha in the diagram. Now the idea behind this iteration is if we take the point x0, f of x0, which lies on the curve, and draw in the tangent to the curve at this point, and then find the point where the tangent to the curve meets the x-axis, and we'll call that point the point x1, 0. Then, as we can see in the diagram, it looks as if x1 will be much closer to the root than x0 was. It won't always be, but it will almost always be. So with this in mind, we're going to try and find a formula for x1 in terms of x0 and the function that we're dealing with. So if we look at the triangle formed by the points x1, 0, the point x0, 0, and the point x0, f of x0, then we can see that the gradient of the line joining x1, 0 to x0, f of x0, has a y step of f of x0 and an x step of x0 minus x1. So we've got the gradient of the line, which is of course the tangent line, is f of x0 divided by x0 minus x1. However, our differentiation results tell us that the gradient of the tangent at the point x0, f of x0, must be the gradient of the curve, f dash, at x0. So we've got the relationship, f dash x0 must be the same thing as f of x0 divided by x0 minus x1. Rearranging that equation gives me f of x0 divided by f dash x0 is equal to x0 minus x1. In other words, making x1 the subject of the formula, we've got x1 must equal x0 minus f of x0 divided by f dash of x0. So to summarize, if f is a continuous function, which can be differentiated, and that we know that we have an approximate solution to the equation f of x equals naught at x0, then we can obtain what will usually be a better approximation by taking x1, which is equal to x0 minus f of x0 divided by f dash x0. Do try and keep in mind the process here. We started with an approximate root, x0. We drew the tangent to the curve y equals f of x at the point x0, f of x0. Found out where the tangent meets the x-axis. We called that new value x1. And we said that x1 is likely to be a much better approximation to the root than x0 was. And we've discovered that x1 is given by x0 minus f of x0 divided by f dash x0. If the function f is both continuous and differentiable, and we know that the equation f of x equals 0 has a root close to the, to the number x0, then x1, which equals x0 minus f of x0 divided by f dash x0, will usually give us a number which is much closer to the root. And this means that we can set up an iteration 
So we're going to let x0 be the number which is fairly close to the root of the equation f of x equals 0. And then we're going to set our new value of x at any stage. So xn plus 1 is the old value of x, xn, minus f of xn divided by f dash of xn. And if we use this iteration, in most cases, we will find that it converges to a root of f of x equals 0 very quickly. So let's try and see this process in practice. So we've got to prove that the equation e to the 0.6x minus 3x minus 2 equals 0 has a root in the interval 3 to 5. Well, if we let f of x equal e to the 0.6x minus 3x minus 2, f of 3 then is minus 4.95, f of 5 is 3.09, so we've got a sign change in a function that is continuous. So we can certainly say that f has got a root in the interval 3 to 5. So we're now going to use the newton raphson method to determine this root correct to three decimal places. So the first thing we need to know is what the rule for the gradient function f dash x is. So simple differentiation gives me that f dash x is 0.6 e to the 0.6x minus 3. So the newton raphson method is going to give us an iteration. We need a starting value for the iteration. We know the root is somewhere in the interval 3 to 5, so it would be sensible to use x0 equals 4 as the midpoint of that particular interval. And then the iteration that we're going to use is the newton raphson iteration which is xn plus 1 equals xn minus f of xn divided by f dash xn. So in this case, that becomes xn plus 1 is xn minus e to the 0.6xn minus 3xn minus 2 divided by 0.6 e to the 0.6xn minus 3. We can use our calculator, if we're careful, to work out the terms in the iteration. To evaluate this correctly on the calculator, we will need to put brackets around the numerator, the top, and the denominator, the bottom, of the fraction. Otherwise, the algebra of used in the calculator will not give us the required answer. So let's see our, the use of our calculator to obtain the terms in the iteration. So first of all, we need to put in the first value, press equals to get it into the answer memory. Then we've got answer minus open brackets. We then need to put in the expression for the top, the numerator of the fraction. So that's e to the 0 0.6 times the answer minus 3 times the answer, minus 2. We need to close the brackets and divide by the f dash expression. So open brackets 0 0.6 e to the 0 0.6 times the answer, last answer. Take away 3 and close the brackets. So it's quite a bit of putting in the, on the calculator to get the terms of the expression. So we've got 4.82, then it's 4.61, 4.60, etc. So we can use the calculator if we're patient in inputting the iteration to get the next terms in the sequence without a huge amount of work. Looking at the values we obtained, we've got x0 was 4, x1 was 4.8237, x2 was 4.6198, etc. And we can see that we've got very quick convergence to a value of 4.600 
correct to three decimal places. We can verify that 4.600 is correct as the root, correct three decimal places, to check it by checking that f has a sign change inside the interval 4.5995 to 4.6005. It's worth looking at the effect of changing the initial value of the iteration. So we started off with an initial value of um, 4 and if we look on this part of the table we got exactly the values we obtained before. And we can see that for values of x0 which are 3 or more the iteration seems to converge nicely to 4.60. However if we had values of x0 which were 2 or less the iteration is converging to a different value namely minus 0 0.40529. It's worth asking ourselves what's the significance of this second value 0 0.40529 and why does changing the initial value from below 2 to above 3 have such a dramatic effect in the process of the iteration. If we look at the graph of f of x which is e to the 0.6x minus 3x minus 2 we'll probably be able to see what happens. The graph shows us that we have got a second root to the equation and that that, that second root is somewhere around about minus 0.4. In other words, this minus 0.4053 looks as if it is the second root of the equation f of x equals 0. We know that f dash x is 0.6e to the 0.6x minus 3, and I can use that to determine the stationary point of the curve, and the stationary point of the curve is where at the point where x is 5 over 3 times by the natural logarithm of 5 or approximately 2.68. So the reason for the big change in what happens if we have x naught being 2 or less as opposed to what happens if we have x naught being 3 or more is due to the fact that there is that stationary point in between x equals 2 and x equals 3. Having a look more carefully at the va different starting values and this time just looking at the starting values between 2 and 3 again we can see that from x going x naught being anywhere between 2 and 2.6 we've got convergence to the negative root minus 0.405 if x is 2.8 or more, then the iteration is converging to nicely to our value of 4.60. If we have x0 is 2.7, then the iteration very, very slowly converges to 4.600. But it is very slow. And notice again that the turning point is in between the values that converge to minus 0 0.405 and the values of x0 for which the iteration converges to 4.60. So if x0 is less than 2.68 then the iteration will converge to the negative root but if x0 is bigger than 2.68 then the, new, the iteration is going to converge to the positive root. In general a newton raphson iteration will be successful provided x0 is reasonably close to the desired root and there are no turning points between the value of x0 and the desired root. To finish this video Pause the video and have a look at this problem which has no correct answers, no wrong answers, it's just trying to predict 
what the newton raphson process will do if we use it with different starting points x naught will the iteration converge to the root alpha will the iteration converge to the root beta will the iteration converge to the root gamma or will none of these things happen just have a think about it and that concludes our introduction to the really important method known as the Newton-Raphson method.